Let's turn our Bibles to Romans 3, okay? We'll read some of these scriptures. We're going to be moving several little scriptures tonight. It's going to be a short message, so... I want you to know that Brother Matt received the email today, and he said he has that up on the, the website for the Daniel 7. And next Sunday now, ask Judy also that she's going to fix a 5 and a half by 8. She should receive the email in the morning when she arrives. And she'll fix a, a little five and a half by eight sheet with some of the scriptures and all we did today. So I'll give a help to you. And um, we can move forward in Daniel. All right. The letter to the Romans, in chapter 3, and let's share some of these words. Let's stand together, would we? Romans 3, beginning at verse 9, and we'll share some different scriptures here. What then? Are we better than they? No, in no wise, for we have, been, we have before proved, both Jews and Gentiles, that they are all under sin. As it is written, there is none righteous, no, not one. There is none that understandeth, there is none that seeketh after God. Now down to verse 20. Therefore by the deeds of the law there shall no flesh be justified in his sight, for by the law is the knowledge of sin. But now the righteousness of God without the law is manifested, being witnessed by the law and the prophets. Even the righteousness of God, which is by faith of Jesus Christ, unto all and upon all them that believe. For there is no difference, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God, being justified freely by His grace through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus, whom God hath set forth to be a propitiation through faith in His blood, to declare his righteousness for the remission of sins that are past through the forbearance of God. To declare, I say, at this time his righteousness, that he might be just and the justifier of him which believeth in Jesus. May God bless his word and you may be seated. I want to talk tonight about uh, pay attention to the signs. Uh, what are some of the roads that we travel in life? I'm going to talk about five things. If you want to jot this in the back of your bulletin, you might want to go out and share that this week. I think it would be a blessing for you. It will be um, more like a testimony, a witness, of uh, five uh, signs that you need uh, to think about. Pay attention to the signs. Now, let's picture tonight that we are riding in a 57 Chevy. How many have a 57 Chevy? Uh, I spoke to a businessman some time ago, and he had in his garage a 1957 Chevy. I said, would you let me have that, please? He said, I was just offered 40000 I said, did you sell it? He said, no. So let's begin our travel in the 57 Chevy, all right? Well, let's look at the first sign on our road tonight. We'll call it root I. You might think root number one, but root I is, is a better term. We just read in Romans 3 about all of us are headed down this road. You already, I think you know what it is, don't you? S-I-N road. Sin's highway. We call it root capital I. Well, it teaches us that we're self-centered, doesn't it? Disobedient. Separated from God. We're on the wrong road. We're riding. We think we're riding on a smooth road. What's wrong with my way? You know what the master's hands just showed. We want to go God's way, not my way. We must go God's way. Well, God doesn't care about how I feel. I've tried to be a really good person. See, I, I, I all the time. I'm not perfect, you know. The Bible teaches us more in Genesis 3 about the fall of man. Way back in the garden, Adam and Eve had it all, didn't they? But the serpent, 
the snake, we know as Satan, tempted Eve to eat of the knowledge, the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, and that fruit was just the bomb, you know. It had to be so beautiful, so beautiful. And uh, God said, if you eat of it, you're going to die. And so she ate, and sin entered, and the original sin began in humankind, separated from God. So we began the travel on that root, capital I. The relationship with God is broken, and there's only one way to get it right. In Romans 5 and 12, the Bible says, Wherefore, as by one man's sin entered into the world, and death by sin, so death passed upon all men, for all have sinned. In 1 Corinthians 15 and 22, it says, For in Adam all die. Look at the signs that sin has brought us. Think about it. Sickness, disease, death, hate, murder, lying, pain, suffering, broken homes, terrorism, drugs, sexual immorality, love of power, love of possessions, love of pleasure. So we keep traveling on root capital I. Some say the love of religion Religion sending people away from God. All religions are the same, they say. We have the atheist club. No God. They say of Jesus, take him or leave him. But as you travel down this road, capital I, the sign says, blackout. The next ten miles. And then the next sign says, the devil's place ahead. And then the sign of everlasting fire, the lake of fire, hell. Well, we better stop that Chevy, Henley. We better turn it around. Or we better look for some hope and some life and some peace. Or where are we going to go? So we have root capital I, number one. Secondly, we have exit R. We're traveling on the road now, exit R. That's called repent exit. God is convicting us. We realize that we're headed in the wrong direction. He's saying, turn off this way. Turn now. Sin's highway leads to destruction. I think we hear Jesus speaking. Jesus said in Mark chapter 1, these words. Mark chapter 1. Now after that, John was put in prison. Jesus came into Galilee, preaching the gospel of the kingdom of God and saying, The time is fulfilled, and the kingdom of God is at hand. Repent ye, and believe the gospel. Well, what does it mean to repent? It means to turn. Change your mind. Change the direction that you're going. If you're going in the wrong direction, you need to turn around. Jesus said, repent and believe the good news of who I am and what I've done. Well, why should I change? Why do I need to change my mind and heart? I'm driving okay in this life. I'm not hurting anyone. I'm, I'm doing fine. Care about my family. I care about friends. Go to church sometimes. Have friends in churches. Jesus said, you're still a sinner. You're separated from me. As long as you're trusting yourself, you haven't turned off the road of self and sin. Turn your life over to me, Jesus said. Acts 3 and 19, repent, therefore, and be converted. Repent and be turned. He's turning us. Let your sins be blotted out when the times of refreshing shall come forth from the presence of the Lord. In Acts 20 and 21, Testifying both to the Jews and to the Greeks, repentance toward God, faith in our Lord Jesus Christ. Lord, I'm truly sorry for traveling the highway, sin's highway. I truly turn my mind and heart over to you. I do repent. 
show me your righteous path. Well, we come to the third road. It's a stop sign. It's pointing on the C road. The C road. That's the cross road. C-R-O-S-S. And it's red, you know, with the blood of Christ. You have to drive across that road if you're ever going to make it to the eternal home. Over in the Bible, if you'd like to turn there or just listen, Romans 5. Have some great words. <clears throat> Romans chapter 5. <clears throat> Verse 6 and following. For when we were yet without strength, in due time Christ died for the ungodly. For scarcely for a righteous man will one die, yet peradventure, perhaps, for a good man, some would even dare to die. But God commendeth his love toward us, in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Isn't that a glorious promise? Much more then, being now justified by his blood, we shall be saved from wrath through him. Well, we need a Savior, don't we? The sea road speaks of the cross and the perfect Savior. By the way of the cross, our sins are forgiven, they're cleansed, they're erased. Our debt is erased. We're put right with the Father. There is our atonement, our covering of sin by His blood. So as we ride down the road, maybe we could sing... I must needs go home by the way of the cross. There's no other way but this. I shall ne'er get sight of the gates of light if the way of the cross I miss. The way of the cross leads home. Have you come by the way of the cross? Well, that's the third road. Fourth road, we turn off the C road and we go down G ramp. G ramp. It's grace. Grace. Let's turn over to a few books over. Ephesians, the letter to the Ephesians. Galatians, Ephesians, in chapter 2. verse 4 and 5. But God, who is rich in mercy, for his great love wherewith he loved us, even when we were dead in sins, hath quickened us together with Christ, by grace ye are saved. In verse 7, that in the ages to come he might show the exceeding riches. See that? Exceeding riches of His grace in His kindness toward us through Christ Jesus. Think about that for a moment. Grace. Undeserved love. Abundant kindness or loving kindness. Blessed favor upon the ones He calls. And in Ephesians 2 we also see about the Ephesians were dead in trespasses and sins. That's in verse 1. They were. That was past. It's the same for you tonight. If you're a Christian, this is present. You're not past in dead, dead in trespasses and sins. You're alive now in Christ by His grace. They walked according to this world. They were children of disobedience. Lust of the flesh, children of wrath. But it's grace. By grace are you saved. Then he says in verse 8, by grace are you saved through faith. Let me ask you this as we travel down G-Ramp, the grace road. 
Brother Travis is just talking about it a minute ago. By grace are you saved through faith, not of yourselves. It's a gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. For this is what we leave out. We are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus unto what? You can call it ministry works. You can call it servanthood works. You can call it friendship evangelism works. Whatever you want to call it. You are created unto good works through the grace of God. By His grace saves you and by His grace He puts you out to do good work. You know, as a pastor, that's a wonderful thing to see people say, Pastor, I want to do a ministry for Jesus. I believe my pastor, let me go back, just a personal thing. I ain't even thought about that just right immediately. I think God put it on my heart. My pastor, who I grew up 14 through 21, off and on along, he didn't say, now, Don, you ought to do this. Don, you ought to do that. You ought to do this as a Christian. I mean, he didn't say that. He believed that the grace of God was great enough put in my heart. He saw me doing things. He said, now, Don, that's a, that's, a, that's a wonderful ministry for the Lord. I would have never thought of that, what you want to do to help that family. You see, if Jesus is alive in you, His grace is at work in you, He'll send you out. You don't have to ask somebody, oh, is this a great ministry? God is at work. He'll show you things. You have somebody have to tell you to do this. Go do that. You might have to tell your children to do that as they're growing up. Well, there are certain ways we have to teach them, you know. It's beautiful in the, the life of the grace of God, ministry for God. It's not earned. It's not deserved. He's chosen you through His dear Son, Jesus, to follow Him, love Him, serve Him, thank Him for it, appreciate it. He said, Lord, I appreciate what you are doing in my life and will do in the future. Have you done that lately? Well, the fifth road, I call it the H highway. Parentheses, heaven. Number five, fifth road is the H highway. We're off G ramp now. The Walking in the grace, riding in the grace through this journey of life, we merge into interstate called H Highway. It's a road to the eternal destination, our glorious home called heaven. You do want to go there, don't you? Uh, did I hear everybody say yes? I don't, th I don't think you want to go. Well, you don't want to be in the great tribulation. You hear more about that later. You don't want to be there. Now watch this road. It becomes straighter and narrower. Jesus talked about it. I, I don't know if we believe that sometimes. We try to change it. They say, everybody just come on in. You're going to heaven. Just feel good. You listen to what Jesus said. Not Don, not deacons, not music leaders, not friends, not family. What did Jesus say about entering into the H highway and going to heaven? Matthew 7, 13 and 14. Enter ye in at the straight gate. That's straight. Does everybody know what the word straight means? Straight. Can you say wide? Broad? Road? That's a narrow road. Uh, we got lost that day in the funeral. I was behind the hearse. We went to Butler. Well, we went in Butler. We beyond that Butler. Tennessee. Some of you know where that is, but we were off the beaten path way back. And I, the uh, man in the van ahead of me, and then the hearse was in front, 
He said, y'all follow me. So we're going down the path, and there's cows out there walking. I said, this is not right. And I'm not too smart, but I said, this road is not right. Jesus said, enter in a narrow, straight rate gate. For wide is the gate, and broad is the way that leadeth to destruction, and many there be which go in thereat. Because straight is the gate, and narrow. Narrow is the way which leadeth unto life, and few there be that find it. Well, you're not going to be on the wide, broad road of destruction and get to heaven. You won't make it on the H highway. It's death forever. It's hell. What about Jesus? He said, if you find it, it's costly. It's not easy. Our Lord Jesus suffered. He hurt, he wept, cried for Jerusalem, healed, forgave, loved, and they killed him. He died on the old rugged cross. Then he arose, and he lives, and he's coming again. There are trials on this narrow road. But thank God he gives us triumph, doesn't he? He's going to win. So you stay with him. But I'm telling you, there are trials down here. We're going to have tribulations down here. In this world, you'll have tribulation. There's confusion, but he's our peace. We're going to weep down here and mourn. But joy comes in the morning. We're going to walk through valleys. to walk through the valley of the shadow of death. He's going to be with us. He'll see us through, won't He? He's going to bring us out to the light of life forever. Well, as we travel on heaven's highway, there's a lot of love for God, for His Word, for others. A lot of love for for reading and studying the Word of God, for prayer, for forgiveness. You know what? Several weeks ago, I, I told my wife, I said, Martha, I, I've gotten to, to email someone. I, I, don't, I don't think it would have mattered one way or, no, or not. I don't think it really mattered one way or not to that person but to my heart and my Lord, it mattered greatly. And I did it. I haven't heard anything about it. I may not ever hear about it. I'm not saying a word about it. But I know in my heart, I offer forgiveness. I accept forgiveness. And we want to make it right. That's the love of God right there. That's following the path that leads on the narrow way straight gate, you see. Witness evangelism on heaven's highway. Service, ministry, discipleship. You know what? I wanted to help someone in discipleship. Guess what? They've walked away. At this time, they've walked away. I don't know if they want me to help them or not. I will not press the issue. If you want to grow, I can help you. I, all I can do is share what God's done with me. You see? The same with you. You're in the same, on the same road and same journey. Look around you. God may be calling you to rise up and say, I want to teach someone, walk with someone, lead someone to grow in Christ. Let's bow in prayer. Thank you, Father, for these five roads tonight. 
We better pay attention to the signs, these roads we travel. What are you trying to tell us? Lord, tonight, if there's one here without Christ, they're not on the highway to heaven. They're on the highway to hell. We, we don't want that. Lord Jesus, you said, For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in Him really trusts, really commit, really humbles themselves, turns from their sin, says, I believe, and I want to follow Jesus as my Savior, Lord. He gives us everlasting life. We don't have to perish. Would you help them to stand for you? Lord, tonight, if there are those here who trust you, Jesus, they're on the right path, but they don't have a church home, would you help them to come into the church family and live for Jesus? Then others may want to come for prayer and ask you, O oh Lord, to help them on the journey of life. We ask in his wonderful name, amen.